artists and welcome to day 116 of the epic journey. Today we're going to be discussing drawing in dots. Now drawing in dots is not something that I do terribly often, but I have done it on occasion and I find it quite intensive, I've got to admit. There are some artists that do amazing works with drawing in dots, like the, the examples I'm showing you now. These are not my drawings, these are examples of artists that I found that are doing it quite prolifically. Now, like I say, I think every artist should at least try and do this drawing with dots. It's very similar in a lot of ways to the tutorial that we were doing with drawing with scribbles or scribble drawing in the sense that if you're drawing in black and white, black pen on a white paper, then your darker areas are going to be the areas where your dots are closer together. So it's a higher density of dots that create your darker areas and your lighter values are just going to be a lighter density or even no dots at all. Now, of course, you can do it the other way around, drawing with white onto black. Um, and this example that I'm showing you now is an artist that I found that was doing white dots on black paper. And she's done this um, lovely picture of a tiger. Now, with other, other way, whether you're doing black on white or white on black, the secret to this is the bigger your artwork is and the smaller your dot is, the more accurate your drawing is going to be. So when you're drawing a large drawing with small dots, then from a small distance where you hardly actually see the dots, it's a little bit like a high resolution photograph. The more dots you've got in a smaller area, the higher the resolution is going to be. Now in the case of drawing, it would work on the size of the artwork. So the bigger the artwork is that you produce, the more accurate or visually compelling it is going to be, particularly if you stand uh, like two or three meters away from it. Because your eyes are not actually going to pick up individual dots, it's going to see the overall value of the drawing. It's only when you really come in close and you see all those millions and millions of little dots that are making up the drawing that it becomes so really fascinating. Now the example that you've got in front of you is actually my eldest daughter Ronwyn, who loves to pose for me. She's, she's a great model. Now the one on the left is what would be a high resolution drawing that's drawn with lots and lots of tiny little dots and it's a large scale drawing so you can fit a lot more of the dots into it. The drawing that you see on the right would be a drawing that you do that would either be smaller or you're using a bigger dot but usually in the case of drawing it would be a smaller drawing and you can't fit as many dots into it so the general resolution is not as good. The difference with that is that you can't get quite as much detail into the drawing I mean, you're still getting the overall shape of it, and um, but if you have a look at the glint in her eye, for example, it's not quite as obvious. Her skin is not quite as smooth because there's not as much space to be able to fit all the dots in. So effectively, you're closer to the drawing, so you're seeing the dots a lot more obviously as opposed to the one on the left. It's bigger, you're able to cram more dots into it because of the size. So generally speaking, you stand a little away from it and you can almost hardly see dots. Or you can see still some on her face where the dots are sparser and further apart but the bigger the drawing the more dots you've got the smaller your dot the better the overall effect of your drawing is going to be so using the same concept I'm going to do something a little bit different for this video where we're going to do a drawing on black paper but instead of using dots we're going to actually poke holes in the paper so that it can be mounted in front of a light now I see this as being a really really lovely effect that you can have in your home for decor where your piece of artwork can be mounted into a light box with a light behind it and your artwork becomes a, a luminescent living thing. So to start with we're going to need a couple of things. First of all we need to be able to lift the paper off of the surface that we're drawing on or that we're poking holes on because we're poking holes so we want the needle to actually be able to go through the drawing. So in, a, in this particular case I'm mounting paper into a embroidery ring. Now my mom does a lot of embroidery so I borrowed one of her embroidery rings. It's not as big as I would like so it's not going to get as much um, detail in it as I would like but it will serve the purpose of being able to do the little demonstration so that I can show you how this sort of thing can be created. The first thing I'm going to need is my embroidery ring or something similar, something that you can put the paper into that's going to hold it rigid but lift it up off the surface. You're going to need a pair of scissors to be able to trim the excess paper off and of course you're going to need a needle and some black paper. Now I like the idea of using black paper because I think the light shining behind the black paper makes it really nice and obvious. Of course you can use whichever color you prefer. You're going to place the paper on top of the embroidery ring and then fold it around the embroidery ring. Allow the paper to create little creases inside the embroidery ring and then you're going to put the outer ring onto over it and 
tighten it really well then your paper becomes a little bit like a drum and you can start poking holes in it. I started off doing a little a pokey hole drawing of a rose and that's what I started off showing you but what I'm going to do now for this demonstration is just to show you how the higher density of dots is obviously where there's going to be more light shining through the so that's going to be your lighter area and the lower density of dot there will be less light shining through so that effectively becomes your higher value area so this is now very similar to drawing with white dots onto a black paper it can also be related to the subtractive drawing that we did you're looking at it from the opposite point of view so all that remains now is to just poke a whole lot of dots in your paper in the right places and you will end up with a great drawing now I've just done an example here with a high density dots in the center there's no actual particular drawing here but have a look at how nice and effective it becomes when I hold it over the light and I think a drawing done like this could be really really attractive so artists, I hope that you've learned something with this tutorial. Drawing with dots is relatively non-complicated. I don't want to say easy because it, it certainly is a labor of love. There's lots and lots of dots to, dots to draw and your hand can get a little bit achy when, you, when you're halfway through your drawing and you're going to wonder why you started it. But the end result is really beautiful. So have lots and lots of fun drawing with dots. I hope to see your images that you place onto the timeline. And if you don't want to, then please, by all means, drop them into a private message. Stay tuned. We're going to um, attack another type of drawing tomorrow in day 117. And I hope to see you then. Thank you so much. And in the meantime, please really like and share this video. And I'll see you tomorrow. Also, don't forget, folks, that the Epic Journey YouTube channel has now been updated. So everything is up to date there. If there's any items that you've missed, please feel free to go and have a look and catch up. Thanks again for joining me. Bye.